Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Hi, to start today, here are a few questions on quadratics for you to answer. Pause the video, try them out. I'm going to talk through them now, so if you, you know, if you get got stuck at any point and maybe you just want a bit of a hint, then I will give some hints as we go along. Expanding double brackets, this is what we get. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but it's sort of a crab claw method, cross multiplying and simplifying. This one, the answer is this. Sometimes people write x squared plus 4, forgetting that actually we've got a double bracket going on. So we will get, basically you can write it like this, x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then you see that you get the 2x and the, um, actually sorry, normally we do cross multiplying is x times 2 from here, and then 2 times x from here. And finally, a very similar one, but this time also adding 4, we get x squared minus 6x plus 13. Solve the following, correct to three significant figures. That is code for quadratic formula. These are not going to be uh, easily factorized. So this is a good opportunity to try and remember the quadratic formula. x equals minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac square rooted all over 2a, where a is the coefficient in front of the x squared, b in front of the x, so in this case minus 6, and c is 4. If you put that in, I'm not going to go in detail on that, but this is what you should get to three significant figures. So we can now solve any quadratic using this formula. We're going to see where this comes from, but at the moment we're just kind of just going with it and, and using it. Lastly, this is an older topic, plotting quadratics, and we do this by simply um, finding values for different values of x. And this is what you should get in your table. Just a reminder, there's a really useful table function in your calculator. Okay, this one, it's not too bad to do without a calculator. Just got to remember to square minus 1, you get positive 1. And then you do minus 2 times minus 1, that's going to give you 3. The negative's the one where you might make a mistake. We do see that we get this symmetry going on with the quadratic. 3, 0, minus 1, and it goes to 0 and back to 3. Because, let me just jump ahead, it's going to look like this. You get a line of symmetry going on. But just back to the table. Here we go, f of x, that's the function, and then we can press alpha x squared minus 2 alpha x. I'm not interested in the second function, start at minus 1, end at 4, go up in 1s, and you see we get the same values, 3, 0, minus 1, 0. Useful to do it a bit more quickly, and especially when the function is more complicated than this. Write down the coordinates of the turning point. That is this thing here. And it's going to be my 1 minus 1 in this case, where it's just the minimum in this case. Today, we're actually going to look how to find the turning point without the graph. If, you just, if I just gave you this, y equals x squared minus 2x, and asked you for the turning point, could you figure it out? Could you do it for any quadratic? That's what we're going to be looking into. And the method is known as completing the square. So today is our introduction into this. And actually, we're going to look back at some maths from thousands of years ago. This is how they did it thousands of years ago. And it's a really nice visual representation. And then we're going to mainly focus on uh, the more modern way of doing it, which is algebra. So uh, a little history lesson to start with. There was some uh, period. Um, where one of the earliest civilizations are called Sumerians, um, and I think it's, it's, they were also called sort of Babylonians, but uh, during that period they um, came up with some mathematics, and this was developed, say, about, you know, we're talking thousands of years ago, and the, the civilization existed from around 4500 BC all the way up to 539 BC. And they, you know, as any civilization did, they they did mathematics to advance themselves out of interest, um, and this is one thing they did. So they discovered a neat way of investigating quadratics. They didn't use x, but they still had the concept there uh, to some extent. This is what they did. If you have 
x squared plus 4x, which they would have represented as areas. So we've got this square here, which has an area of x squared, and this here will have an area of 4x. If we add them together, we'll get x squared plus 4x. They looked into how they could write that in a slightly different way, which, which has uh, lots of uses. If we split the 4 in half into 2 and 2, I've got the same shape. But now if I take this right hand rectangle and move it down and rotate it, then what I get is this thing on the right. Essentially, I get something that's really close to being a square. It's x plus 2 in length and x plus 2 in height because of the way I've moved it, because I split this into two. The only thing is I'm missing this little bit here, which has an area of 2 times 2, which is 4. So overall, we can write x squared plus 4x as this perfect square. I didn't say that in the starter, but this is called a perfect square, x plus 2 all squared. But then I need to minus the 4 to make it work. And this process is known as completing the square, basically going from a rectangle to a square. I, of course, I, you know, I, I don't quite have a square, so I have to minus 4 from it. But these two are equivalent. Now, why on earth would you want to do that? Well, here is the answer. It allows us to find the turning point of the function because if I write it in, we call it in completed square form, what I have is a square number and I'm minusing another number from it. When I square a number, I'll never get a negative. Like, like minus 2 times minus 2 is positive. 3 times 3 is 9, it's, it's positive. The only smallest that it could be would be 0 times 0, which is just 0. So what I'm trying to say here is that this thing here is always greater or equal to 0. And that means the function overall is always going to be greater or equal to minus 4, because whatever I get here, I'm going to be minusing 4 from it. The smallest that it could be would be minus 4. And that gives me my minimum, or my, in the, we call it a turning point generally, but it could be a maximum or minimum here. It's going to be a minimum. Um, so my turning point right, we'll come to the x value in a minute, but the y value we've calculated, it's going to be minus 4. Now, what is the x value that gives that minus 4? It's going to be the x value that leads to this being 0. And that's going to be when x is minus 2. That will make the bracket 0, a bit like when we solve quadratics. So the turning point is minus 2, minus 4. You can get that by writing it in this completed square form. And this can actually help us to sketch a quadratic. So this quadratic here, when x is 0, y will be 0. I'll know it's going to go through the origin. But now I've got one extra piece of information. I know that the turning point is going to be minus 2, minus 4. It's going to be down here. And that is enough for me to sketch it because quadratics always it's called, they're called parabolas. They always look like this. Actually, if there's a negative in front, they look like that. So we call these happy quadratics and sad quadratics. But we've got a happy quadratic here because it's just uh, x squared. That means I can, I can sketch it. That is my sketch. You can see a parabola. I've got a line of symmetry going down the middle. I just need to label that point. I can see that it's going for the origin, so I don't need to label that point. I could if I wanted. So whew, suddenly, this completing the square turns out to be really useful. We can find the turning point. It's got other uses as well, which we're not going to look at today. Today, we're going to focus on finding the turning point and drawing some sketches. Over to you then. Can you do the similar for this one? Okay, so I've kind of, this is called scaffolding, I've taken little bits away. We're going to have to split the 6 into 3 and 3 this time. Because then if I move it down, they're going to both, they're going to, it's going to be x plus 3 by x plus 3. There we go. And so what I'm going to get is x plus 3 all squared. But again, I'm missing a little bit, so I need to subtract that, like compound area, and I'm going to subtract 9. 
that gives us the turning point. It's going to be minus 9 when this thing is 0 on the left. I'm always going to be minusing 9. And it's going to be when x is minus 3. I've done this a lot more quickly, but it's the same idea. And now I know that this one's again going to go through the origin. So the minus 3, minus 9. So I'm actually going to just draw it in first. And then I'm going to put that point on. That's a bit easier to do. Okay, if you got that, brilliant. If not, I hope it makes sense. How about this one? Pause the video, try this out. Okay, so this time I'm going to need to split it into 5 and 5. I'm going to move this down. You'll hopefully have drawn us a third drawing. There we go. So this is 5. And what am I ending up with? I'm ending up with x plus 5, all squared. <clears throat> and then I need to minus this blue bit which is 25. Now, at this point, you might have kind of spotted the pattern. We're just halving whatever's in front of the x, because that's allowing us to turn it into a square. But I get this extra bit. I have to then subtract whatever is here squared, because you, you get this little square coming from the 5 by 5. And actually, that, is, that will always work, but hopefully you can see it visually. The turning point, minus 5, minus 25. The sketch, again, well, we're going to look at ones that don't always go for the origin, but again, it's just going to be like this. Okay, I know, you know, I'm taking away the scaffolding, so try this one. It's getting a bit repetitive, perhaps, but hopefully you're getting the idea. So this time I've got my square, I'm going to split it into two, x plus 8 squared, but I need to subtract that, 64, and that is in completed square form, minus 8, minus 64. All right, slightly different one now, but we're going to use the same process. We're going to complete the square on x squared minus 2x. Just it, the diagram falls apart a little bit because you can't get a negative length, but we're just going to kind of roll with it and do the same thing and it will be okay. So x by x, going to split it so it's minus 1 and minus 1, and that's okay, this here is, is going to be 1, so I'm then going to minus 1 from it. If you're not happy with that, then check this out. If I expand this out, and you could have done this with all the other ones, I'm going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then I'm going to minus 1, and these cancel, and I can see I go back to the start. So even when there's a negative, you have this number here, okay, to essentially help us make a square. And then we're just going to minus it as a positive. I'm technically minusing minus one squared, which is you could, it's just minusing one. You don't add one just because it's a negative or anything. And that gives us a turning point this time of x is one, and y is minus one. So we get a positive. For our x value. It's going to look like this. Which, if you look back at the start of the lesson, we plotted it. And although we didn't know that the, you know, it's going to go through axis at 2, we got the turning point from here. So we've, come, we've got to where we want to get to. We can now sketch, basically, 
all these types of quadratic, completing the square, getting the turning point. It has other uses as well, which we will be looking at. But hopefully you're happy with what we've done so far. We're not finished, but this is a good start. Before we move on, I've got a quick little test for you then. Can you write x squared plus 24x in completed square form? This form here. Try and do it without the diagrams now, just by using the method that we've been covering. So this would be how I'd write it. That, you know, you might have gone straight to the answer, but I would, I would put it in a bracket. I'd make it 12, because I've halved the 24, and I need to minus 12 squared. And that's going to give me this one here, B. If there's a minus, have a go at this. I'm going to have the 18 as I'm completing the square. I've got a square now, but I need to minus 81, which is minus 9 squared. Done. That's so going to be D. Okay, well done if you're up to speed on that, because there's an extra little bit that we're now going to add. All the quadratics so far have not had a constant in there, or should I say the coefficient of x to the zero. But we can still complete the square on those, we can still find the turning point, and we can still sketch the graph. And this is how we do it. We, all we do is we worry about completing the square on this bit here. So as before, it's going to be x plus 3, all squared. I've just dealt with the red bit. And now I need to minus 9 from that so that they're the same. And all I do then is put the minus 4 in as well. So this, this it's just a tiny little extra step. I've got to simplify it. That's going to become minus 13. And that's it. I get the turning point in the same kind of way. It's going to be minus 3 minus 13 and I can I can uh, sketch my graph right now this time it's not going to go through zero it's actually going to go through minus four because that is when x is zero I get y is equal to minus four so that's good to know and then I know the minimum is going to be at minus 3, minus 13, so it's actually going to come down like that. It helps sometimes to draw the curve in first. Minus 3. Now, actually, this is not to scale, really, is it? Maybe I should have done it slightly differently, but it's good. It's actually good enough because it's just a sketch. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be to scale. The fact that it's minus 4 there and minus 13 there, it doesn't, it's not so important if you're not happy with it okay well then actually let's let's give it another go uh let's just, we we know that it's a lot a lot further down here so i've just brought the minus four up okay and that is a little bit more representative it can be quite difficult to get you know sketches to scale and it's not it's not vital we've got the general shape that's absolutely fine. Try this next one yourselves. So it's the same idea, but this time we've got a negative in there. Doesn't matter. Have it. And then we're going to minus 9. And I still need to plus 12. This time I get three and three. Okay, it's going to go through 12. And it's going to come down to about here. All right, this is another reason why it's really useful to complete the square, because this, this, this graph doesn't actually go through the x-axis. It won't factorize. Nor, I did say you can use a quadratic formula, but if you worked out, if you tried to use a quadratic formula, you would end up with an, um, a math error on your calculator. There'd be a negative square root because this one has no solutions. First quadratic you've probably seen that has no solutions when you set it equal to zero. It doesn't go through the axis, but we can. St it still exists. And we can still plot it, 
and that is it. Or sketch it. This is a sketch. Two more to try. This time, right, I've written it slightly differently. <laughs> this is code for completing the square. Write this in the form ax plus a all squared plus b. Okay, you've got to, I mean, it's, it's probably easier because you might forget what it means to complete the square, whereas this, you're like, okay, I need to get it in a bracket, squared, and so on. All right, we're completing the square, so we're going to have that 8. Remember, when we expand this out, we still get 8x. I don't need to write an x in there because I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to minus 16. I'm going to add 20. And then I'm going to simplify it. Okay, I've just drawn it in first. There we go. One more. So I'm adding a few in that do have, they don't go through the uh, x-axis. Okay, it goes through 12 and 2 and 8, so uh, this time it's going to be over here. That's not very good. Let's try again. Brilliant. So, I would like you to try some more. It's like a lot of practice, but the, you know you can see how quickly you can do it once you've got your head around it. Once you kind of you've learned the rule but understood the rule. Don't forget the Babylonian method. It's really nice visually to see what's happening. So there are a load of more questions for you to try sketching them. If you're feeling really confident, skip through them a little bit. Absolutely fine. There's some extensions at the end. If you want to take a bit more time, please do so. Don't rush it. Make sure you can do this quite complicated skill at GCSE level. So I'm going to, this is a, available as a handout, so hopefully you've got the whole thing. I'm going to show you the answers bit by bit. Now, all of those have nice whole numbers um, inside the bracket. That's typically what you'll see at GCC. But just to push you, here's some where you don't get nice whole numbers. We still have the 3. We get 1.5, which I've left as a fraction. We still have the minus 5. We get minus 5 over 2. And this is like the most, the deepest kind of question is, can you do it generally? You have it, minus a squared, you still have to add the c. You can't do anything more than that, but we get the turning point. We have, now I've got rid of the 2, I've just got a minus b. Same idea though, it's going to be minus b over 2, all squared. Put that in a bracket. When you square that, you get b squared over 4. You can write it like that. Okay, so if you manage to do that, brilliant. If you want to keep going, here are a couple of extensions. So 
So we can go from the quadratic to completing the square and get the turning point. If I give you the turning point, you can just work your way backwards. So you can write down the, it as this, x minus 3 all squared plus 2, because the minimum is 2, and the x value is then going to be um, 3 for the minimum. So that's quite good, and then you can expand it out and get that. Now this is going a bit beyond what we've, what we've looked at today, but is there more than one option? And actually the answer is yes. Any quadratic where you have a constant a in front of it will have this turning point. So you can let a equal 2 and find a different quadratic with a turning point a equal 3, even a negative, even like 0 0.5. a is 1 is the example above. So this is a whole, this is every single quadratic in fact that has a minimum at or a turning point at 3, 2, every single quadratic. Last challenge. You've not ever done this before, maybe. Can you factorise this graph here and hence sketch it? All right. This is known as a hidden quadratic. You can actually factorise in terms of x squared. You could sort of just treat, just replace x to the 4 by x squared and um, x squared here by x originally and you and then put it back in and that's what you'd get as you're starting factorization if i just had x squared and x you would just have x here and x here and it would all work but now i've got a difference of two squares for both of them and i can actually expand it still further and here's what you can then do you can actually i've already put the whole thing on the graph so i'm going to give, give it away but you can plot the roots, minus 2, minus 1, 1 and 2, and you know, just like for a quadratic, that as x gets really big, y gets really big, so it's got to come um, to plus infinity up here. But as it comes down, you know it crosses the axis, and then you know it's going to cross again, so it sort of makes sense, and you get this nice w coming out. So we don't just get happy and sad quadratics, we get these interesting faces going on as well. It's more of an A-level topic, to be fair. But hopefully it's of interest to you if you've, if you've uh, stayed to the end of the video. Thank you for doing so. The main thing, of course, is that you can complete the square on ones like this today. Thanks for your efforts.